All right, I want to talk about parameters uh, real quick. In my reef tank and just in my reefing career, in the hobby for me, how I've how I have approached um, keeping my parameters stable and what they are, because I think that there's there are so many ways to go about keeping your parameters stable. Um, and experienced reef keepers get so deep into you know new territory and experimental territory and find their niche with it. And, uh, you know, brand new reef keepers to the hobby are often, that's the most intimidating part. It was for me, like, how am I going to keep these parameters up? So for me, when I started in the hobby, I started utilizing, uh, Hannah checkers, which are kind of expensive. Ironically enough, even though I have Hannah checkers for, uh, mag, I'm sorry, elk, calcium and magnesium, which are the big three that you need to pay attention to for corals that you want to control. Uh, I have actually since reverted to using Salifert test kits, which are cheap. They're like, you know, 10 or 15 bucks for, you know, a whole bunch of tests in a little, little paper box. Um, I found that it's quicker and I found that, you know, as long as you do them carefully, they're, they're just as accurate. So if you want to save money, get some Salifert test kits. Um, they're fantastic. I would get one for al alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium. Traditionally in the hobby, Alkalinity has been what reef keepers are stressed to pay attention to the most. I think that's probably right. Um, calcium doesn't swing as much and magnesium, as long as it's between like 1300 and 1500, which some people would scream about the 1500 comment. I don't know. I find that like Ghanis do really, really well above 1400. Um, I've let mine slip, you know, upwards sometimes and I didn't see any negative effects and my Ghanis did okay. So I've heard others echo that sentiment about, um, you know, Ghanis and certain other um, LPS corals. So do with that what you will. I keep mine at 1400 or right around it. Um, so here, I'll just go through what, what my parameters typically are. My parameters are always within a very, very close range of 8.5 alkalinity, 425 calcium, and 1400 magnesium okay and the alkalinity number i came to because i do have an acro in here um, and several sps corals they tend to like lower elk again i'm not challenging anybody i know people run higher alkalinity with all kinds of corals um conventional knowledge seems to be that they like lower elk but if there was ever a hitch in the giddy up and i had an issue and my elk was dropping i didn't want it to be like right at eight or a 7.5 or something like that. Eight seems to be a pretty happy point for a lot of coral. So I put it at 8.5 so that it could slip downward a little bit and I could recover it before it got out of control. Like my next test, I could I could recover it. Um, calcium, I literally based on, I just typed into Google, what is the calcium level of, of a reef, a real ocean reef? It's about 425, 400 to 425. So I just pegged it at 425 and it stays right there. And then I, uh, magnesium, typically I think 1350 is advised. But again, because I saw some noticeable effects on Ghani's being happy a little higher, I bumped it a little higher to 1400 and I don't really go over that. I hang out right at about 1400 and I've had great success. Um, you know, had great success with my corals at these levels. I've kept them at these levels for like a couple of years now. Um, my dosing setup, so I would, I would recommend to a new reef keeper, depending on your budget, either hand dose and use the calculator on BRS to keep your levels consistent and test them, you know, two, three times a week with Salifert test kits or Hannah, if you have a little, a little money to burn on test kits. Um, but uh, essentially I would say that the most important thing for you is just get into routine with it. Um, stay with a routine, stay like set reminders on your watch, on your phone and test, test, test every week. I know it's annoying. I know it sucks to do it. Just do it until you get some kind of auto water tester. If you ever do, they're not necessary. I have a Neptune Trident. I've found it to be very accurate, had really good success with it. Um, I buy my reagents from ABC reagents, which are half the cost of Neptune reagents. Um, and they've been fantastic, works super well. And what I do, um, is, you know, elk, 
cal alkalinity calcium magnesium are what I pay attention to the most. I've actually gone to dosing calc wasser with a homemade calc reactor that I formed just to give you a peek at like what, how advanced you can get. Not that this is like crazy advanced. I mean, a lot of this is like DIY and stuff, but I have a DIY calc reactor. I run it 24 seven. This little pump just continually drips into my tank. Um, I've got dedicated elk, calcium, magnesium that then provide like surgical doses to keep it right where it needs to be. And then I also dose all for reef, just like, you know, 10 milliliters a day, just to keep some trace elements going into the tank. Uh, I found that that actually makes the corals color up better. And I've got, of course, a full ne Neptune Apex system. I have three dose units back here. So like, <laughs> again, I'm not wealthy. I accumulated all this gear over the course of like five years, saving and scrounging, foregoing, foregoing new shoes for myself to put more into my reef keeping budget. Um, but now it's like where I want it to be essentially. Um, and it's been working out real well, but like I said earlier in the video, you don't have to do that. I found a lot of success just testing my own water and then squirting in supplements on my own and then using like little come over pumps when I got a little more money and I went that direction. So if you have any questions about parameters, supplement levels, um, you know, different kinds of things that you might want to dose, uh, please leave in the comments. I will absolutely respond. Thanks.